Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Dynamic VPN CLI Learning Byte. Okay, so here is our example, and there's a few things I want to point out. Here we have SRX1, which is the device we will be working with primarily. And then we have Server1, which is connected to SRX1 in the Servers Zone. And Server1 has an IP address of 10.10.20.123. And then SRX1 is connected to the internet using Gigi002 in the untrust zone. And then we have the remote worker, which is connected to the internet and needs to access Server1. And so for this demo, here's the criteria. We want to configure SRX1 with a dynamic VPN. We want to use the Pulse client. We want to allow access to Server 1. We want to have the setup be flexible so the remote worker's IP address can change because the remote worker could be at home. They could be on the road. They could be at a coffee shop or whatever. Then all user traffic should go through the VPN. So no split tunneling. And then we're going to use the CLI to configure the dynamic VPN. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get going. So here is SRX1. Now, one thing I do want to point out here is that this SRX is what I use for my internet gateway at home. So you're going to see some other configuration that doesn't pertain to this learning byte. So when you do see that, it can be safely ignored. And so to begin, we want to jump into configuration mode and then go to the access hierarchy. Now, one thing I do want to point out is we are not using a radius server or certificates for this configuration. We are using pre-shared keys. And that can be useful if you have a small enterprise that, you know, say less than 50 users, it's not a big deal to manage that on the SRX device itself. Or say you just don't want the hassle of certificates. You can get around that by doing this type of configuration. Now, if you have hundreds or thousands of users, you're going to want to use certificates with a radius server to manage that without a doubt. So keep that in mind. Okay, so to begin, we want to create a profile. We're going to call this profile Dyn pulse dash profile because we're going to use dynamic vpn with the pulse client and then we want to set a user so client now keep in mind that this is case sensitive so we'll have to make sure we enter this correctly if we on the client side enter this with a lowercase p it's not going to work firewall user password we're going to set the password to lab123 then we need to set the address assignment pool. We're going to call this pool Dyn Pulse Pool. Now we haven't configured this pool yet. We'll do that in this next step. And we're going to hand out IP addresses from this range to the remote worker. And we do have to specify at least a primary DNS as well. And then we do want to configure, let me go up more, one more, firewall authentication, the web authentication default profile. And we need to specify that profile that we just configured. Okay, then let's go ahead and configure the security zone, the untrust zone, we can see we have one interface here, and we already have IKE configured, and that's fine under the Gigi002 interface, but we also need to configure HTTPS. That's gonna be necessary, so you have to have IKE and HTTPS configured as host inbound system services for the interface that will be receiving the requests from the user, the remote worker to establish the tunnel. So the remote worker will be establishing the tunnel that's coming in on Gigi002. So keep that in mind. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the IKE configuration. We need to configure a policy. We'll call this Dyn Pulse IKE Paul Policy. We'll set the mode to aggressive. Set the proposal, we'll just use the standard proposal set. And we're going to say pre shared key, ASCII text, and we're going to say Juniper123. And then we'll configure the gateway. We're going to have the IKE policy that we just configured. 
And we have to set their dynamic configuration. Set the host name. So that's a dyne dash pulse for the host name. Then we need to set the IKE user type to group ID. Then we need to set the external interface to gigi002. And then we need to set that AAA profile that we configured. Then we need to configure the IPsec parameters. Set the policy, we're just going to use the proposal set standard. Then we need to set the VPN, we need to reference the gateway, and then also the IPsec policy. And then next we need to configure the dynamic VPN parameters. Set the access profile to the profile we created earlier. If we need to edit clients, we're just going to say all because it's going to be all the clients. Set remote protected resources 10.10.20.0 24. Then we're going to set the remote exceptions to all zeros. Then we're going to set the IPsec VPN that we configured earlier. Then we're going to set the users pulse user one and then the last thing we need to configure is the security policy and we set that to all you know the best criteria to to any 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 set then permit tunnel IPsec VPN, and then we specify that VPN name. And that is the configuration. Let's go ahead and commit that. All right, so before we carry on, I realize I just made a mistake that we need to address. Uh, right now, I actually have it set up for split tunneling. We don't want to do that. We want to set this up so there is no split tunneling. So let's go ahead and go back to the dynamic VPN, client all, clients all hierarchy. We see here we have remote protected resources and remote exceptions. We want to change that. I want to get rid of the one remote protected resource. And that will require the user to send everything through the tunnel when the user is connected via the dynamic VPN with Pulse. Let's commit the configuration. All right, so now that the configuration is complete, let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker device. All right, so here is the client device. Let's go ahead and create a new connection with the Pulse Secure application. And we need to set the type to firewall SRX. Set this name. And then we set the server URL to the IP address of the actual server. Click connect. And it gives us a prompt asking if, hey, this is not a trusted certificate because we're just using the SRX as local certificate, obviously. So I'll we'll click Save Settings and Connect. Now we need to enter our username. Remember, this is case sensitive. And then our password, Lab123. And we'll get prompted again since this is a new connection. And so we just enter our password again. The username is already filled in. And keep in mind, all subsequent connections after that, you don't have to enter the password twice like that. So if we disconnect, then reconnect, we only have to enter the password once and the username was already filled in. And then if we open WinSCP, we can access the server and transfer a file. Then if we hop back to the CLI, we can run a few commands to examine and verify the dynamic VPN. And we can see here the IKE information. We can see the exchange type is set to aggressive, authentication method is set to pre-share keys. We can see the peer IKE ID set to pulse user one, dying pulse, and the other information associated with this VPN. And we can look at the security associations, that is the phase two or IPsec security associations associated with the VPN.
We can use the active peer command to look at additional information as well. We see the IP address that is handed out is the 182.168.111.2. We can see the XAuth username is pulse-user1, as well as the peer, IKE ID, and other information associated with that VPN. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure dynamic VPNs with a Pulse client using the CLI, and then we demonstrated how to verify dynamic VPNs using the CLI. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.